The Russian Defense Ministry says its forces have seized areas around a nuclear power plant in eastern Ukraine, but this is denied by the Ukrainians. A spokesman stressed Russia had air superiority over Ukraine and also claimed Ukraine is using civilians as a human shield. The leadership of Ukraine and the authorities of the city, having announced a curfew, are persuading the residents of the capital to stay in their homes. This once again proves that the Kiev regime uses the residents of the city as a human shield for the nationalists who have deployed artillery units and military equipment in residential areas of the capital. We appeal to the people of Kiev, all civilians in the city can freely leave the capital of Ukraine along the Kiev Vasilkiv, Kiev Vasilkov in Russian, ED, highway. This route is open and safe, once again, I want to emphasize that the armed forces of the Russian Federation strike only at military targets. The civilian population is not in danger. Well, for more on the war in Ukraine, we can cross over and join our eyes editorial director, Nick Jennings. Nick, I want to say thank you for joining us here on Newsday. Now tell us about the prospects of a ceasefire. Those speed stalks are now on the way in Belarus. Well, I'm not sure I would call them peace talks. There are many developing dimensions to this story, although the war is only five days old. These are social, diplomatic and uh, economic consequences of what's happening. But what we're seeing this morning is this meeting taking place between representatives of UK Ukraine and uh, Russian officials. Uh, President Zelensky is not attending, uh, we believe. And I think both sides are having what in old-fashioned language they would call a parley, where they're putting both putting their demands forward. We've heard that the Ukrainians are demanding that the Russians withdraw immediately, that there's a ceasefire and that they withdraw all their troops. I think it's very unlikely that Russia is going to agree to that. I think it will be putting its counterpoint, which is it will be telling the Ukrainians, as we've heard, that uh, it will allow all civilians to leave peacefully and that the, uh, you, the, the present government in Ukraine should, should resign effectively and then uh, let the Russians move in and take over and install what many people would regard as a puppet government. I don't think that's going to happen. We'll wait and see what comes out of these talks, but I doubt you're going to see much given away by either side. So is it fair to say Russia's hopes for a swift victory are all but dashed? Well, it's only five days old, um, so it's hard to say what in these circumstances would be regarded as a swift uh, victory. There is no doubt, according to many military observers, that the, the Russian assault has been slower, or the results of it have been slower than perhaps than Putin and the uh, Kremlin were planning. We're hearing from uh, the Ukrainian side that what they're saying, 4,300 Russian casualties and a large number of armoured vehicles taken out of the uh, taken out of the war. Whether we can believe those figures it remains to be seen because, of course, both sides are giving out their own version of events. It's very difficult to see how this will develop. We need to wait and see what happens, what comes out of these talks. Meanwhile, there's a huge humanitarian crisis uh, on its way uh, because of the number of refugees that are reported to be fleeing from Ukraine. The European Union is now um, predicted that this could affect over 7 million people across Europe if this war continues. The latest figures being given out by the UN refugee uh, organization is that more than 500,000 refugees have now fled Ukraine into neighboring Poland, Romania, and some of the other Eastern European countries, many of those, of course, from Africa. Nick Jennings, thank you so much for joining the program and helping us keep up to speed with that information. Uh